I have compiled this video for people who are interested in the famous artist, author, and designer William Morris. First, I will share with you our 2022 visit to Morris's country home, Kelmscott Manor in West Oxfordshire. Then I'll share our vlog from 2023 when we visited Standan House, an arts and crafts home in West Sussex, which was built in the late 1800s and features William Morris's designs throughout this beautiful home. Kelmscott Manor is located in a bucolic setting on the edge of the Thames. It was the rural retreat for William Morris and his family. Morris is known as the father of the arts and crafts movement, which emerged in the late 19th century as a reaction against the industrialization and mass production of the Victorian era. The movement aimed to revive traditional craftsmanship and emphasize the beauty of handmade objects. Morris is well known for his work in textile design, wallpaper, bookbinding, and literature. However, I was actually surprised when I toured Kelmscott Manor as it was more minimalist than I expected. Though it contains several fascinating tapestries on the walls, compared to the many opulent country homes I've visited, it seemed shockingly sparse in its furnishings. Apparently, Morris's wife Jane joked that living in the house was like a continual picnic, but the informality was part of the Morris's philosophy of simplicity. It was a place for close friends, not for acquaintances who you are trying to impress. Speaking of Jane Morris, she was a gorgeous woman who was beautifully depicted in these paintings and sketches displayed in the home, which were created by pre-Raphaelite artist Dante Gabriel Rossetti. I loved exploring the house and discovering the many Morris patterns of wallpaper, curtains, and draped walls throughout the house. These curtains caught my eye because the pattern looked similar to a Laura Ashley design that was all the rage in the 90s when we got married. We had a bedspread and curtains in that Laura Ashley design in the master bedroom of our first home. The architecture in Kelmscott Manor is a bit quirky, as demonstrated in this uniquely shaped hall and doorway, and this bizarre split-level staircase. The sign claims it is easy to ascend, but I found it rather unnerving to traverse. I'm sure I'd get used to it eventually, but it was quite odd. This was my favorite room in Kelmscott. It features a bed that Morris loved so much, he wrote a poem about it. May Morris embroidered the words of the poem around the drape at the top of the bed. Here are the words of the poem, which gives voice to the bed itself. The wind's on the wold, and the night is a cold, and Thames runs chill twixt mead and hill. But kind and dear is the old house here, and my heart is warm midst winter's harm. Rest then, and rest, and think of the best twixt summer and spring when all the birds sing. In the town of the tree, and ye lie in me, and scarce dare move, lest earth and its love should fade away ere the full of the day. I am old and have seen many things that have been both grief and peace and wane and increase. No tale I tell of ill or well, but this I say, night treadeth on day and for worst or best, right good is rest. William Morris was also an activist, joining England's first official socialist party, the Social Democratic Federation, which shaped his progressive ideas on workers' rights and equality. Kelmscott's architecture and landscape inspired Morris's utopian vision of a post-industrial revolution England. This exquisite quilt for a child's bed was designed by William's daughter May and embroidered by his wife Jane. It features depictions of Kelmscott Manor and the Thames, many animals and plants, and proverbs around the border. We visited Kelmscott Manor with our sons Weston and Trent. Before leaving, we enjoyed a stop in the gift shop, where Trent bought some souvenirs, as well as the cafe and tea room, where we enjoyed fresh and delicious salads, as well as a scrumptious cheese plate. Not to mention Weston's hot chocolate in this stunningly unique Kelmscott mug. Now it's time to move on to our tour of Standan House, starting with the garden. We are in West Sussex now at Standan House. This is a National Trust property. And it's raining. <laughs> Collecting some squash for today's lunch. 
Those are some pretty giant artichokes. I'm gonna film these three magenta plants. One, two, this plant has different colors, but it's all the same. Looks like some type of a impatience family. I lied, more than three. Cause this is three, that's four, and that is five. This looks like another one of those inside out plants where there are petals that look like they're underneath leaves on top, but those leaves are probably actually petals themselves. Okay, these plants of course have some proper Latin name, but they're commonly known as bear's breeches. That is so funny. When all the wisteria are blooming and the lavender at the same time, this would be a really pretty walk. Stand In House is an arts and crafts house designed by architect Philip Webb between 1892 to 1894. It is filled with examples of William Morris's work in virtually every room and is a museum to both Morris as well as the arts and crafts movement in general. These are portraits of James and Margaret Beale, who had Stand In House built for them. They were originally from Birmingham, but their railway business brought them to London and they built Stand In as their country retreat. Margaret Beale was six generations descended from Oliver Cromwell, but Margaret was very proud of her connection to Cromwell, which is why his picture is displayed here in the billiard room, pride of place. And allegedly the Cromwell nose came down through the generations because Margaret's daughter Daughter Maggie appears to still have that Cromwell nose. This trellis wallpaper was designed by Morris in 1862, was one of his first wallpaper designs. It's William Morris rose trellis wallpaper. This wool curtain is in a pattern from 1878 called Bird, which was one of William Morris's personal favorite. One of the rooms in Kelmscott House in Hammersmith is hung with it. This is Morris's tulip and lily pattern, which was mostly used for curtains, but they have it as a rug on the floor. The wallpaper is the powdered design from 1874. Its wall hangings are the Morris design called artichokes, which the Beale family purchased the kit and then Margaret and her daughters did the embroidery of the design. James and Margaret's daughter Maggie was a talented artist who was enrolled in the Slade School of Fine Arts when her parents were moving into Stand In House. As she stayed with them in this weekend home, Stand In became a place of creativity for her, as documented by these sketchbooks in her studio. That's a fabulous dressing up box, and I love that it has that white wig in it like a barrister would wear. The woodwork in this lovely dining room is painted in the shade of green which William Morris deemed restful to the eyes. I hope you enjoyed touring these two homes with us, which displayed many works of the prolific artist William Morris. Next, please check out one of these other videos for more beautiful homes and castles we visited in nearby Sussex. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.